So that's my case for Robert Pattinson's Hi everyone, I'm Justin Ashbrook, and today I'm going to be talking about Robert Pattinson's Batman, written and directed by Matt Reeves, that's coming out October 21, 2021, and what it needs to do in order to be successful. If you're finding me for the first time, I do DC videos like this, I do Marvel videos, I do Doctor Who videos, sometimes I post music. Also, if you watched my Stargirl episode 5 review and you're wondering where my episode 6 review is, I'll talk about that at the end of the video. And before we start, if you could please give this video a like, that would be great. Okay, so let's get started. So, to answer the question, what does Matt Reeves' Batman, Robert Pattinson's Batman, need to do in order to be successful? If you saw the thumbnail, you already know the answer to this, but he needs to not kill anyone. And I know some of you are going to disagree with me, and that's completely fine. Uh, I'm just asking that you hear me out, and I will absolutely hear you out too in the comments, or if you guys want to send me videos that take a different position on this. So whatever position you have on this, you are welcome in our channel community. So I do have a script with kind of three reasons why I feel this should be the case. So the first reason why I think Batman shouldn't kill is because it makes him such a deeper and more interesting character. When Batman's parents were killed, he lost the two most important people in his life. Presumably, every person Batman fights has at least one person that would care about them the same way Bruce cared about his parents. Batman shouldn't kill people because if he does, he is putting someone through that same trauma and hardship that he experienced when his parents were killed. If he kills people, he is no better than Joe Chill, the person who murdered his parents. Almost every superhero has dead parents, but Batman going through the thought process that I laid out gives him such a unique characterization that you don't find a lot in action or even superhero movies. What, your moral code just won't allow for that? It's too hard to cross that line? No! God Almighty, no! It'd be too damned easy. All I've ever wanted to do is kill him. A day doesn't go by when I don't think about subjecting him to every horrendous torture he's dealt out to others, and then... end him. Aww, so you do think about me. But if I do that, if I allow myself to go down into that place, I'll never come back. It also gives Batman a moral conflict. Like I mentioned, if he kills, he's no better than the criminals he fights. However, if he doesn't kill, say, the Joker, the Joker could escape from prison and kill more people, which he wouldn't be able to do if Batman had killed him. This creates a moral conflict over whether the right thing to do is to kill the Joker and refuse to end a life, or if it's to end one life, inflict trauma over that one person, in order to save other lives. This creates tension and forces Batman to make a choice. The correct one obviously being to not end a life. If you're interested in the origin of Batman's no killing rule from the comics and you want a more fleshed out version of the argument that I just made, then I highly recommend High Top Film's video on this subject. I'll put a link in the description and maybe I'll put a card on screen now. So the second reason why I think Batman shouldn't kill is because it would give us a new fresh take on the character compared to what we've typically gotten in live action Batman films so far. In most of the live action Batman movies we've had so far, Batman kills people. Animation is a different story. Usually in animation he doesn't. So I'll go through every live action Batman movie to show you what I mean. Batman kills people in the Adam West Batman movie, the Michael Keaton movies, and Batman Forever. For all the faults of Batman and Robin from 1997, it's the only live action movie where Batman definitely doesn't kill. However, the movie has significant issues in other areas, so it's hard to point to it as a great Batman movie. The Dark Knight trilogy is a little bit ambiguous. He kills the League of Assassins members, but that's before he's actually Batman. 
There are also scenes, particularly the car chase ones, where it's unknown whether the people die or not, so I personally like the headcanon that they survived. Another thing is that while he doesn't kill Ra's al Ghul, he leaves him to die, which you could argue is equivalent to killing him. And then obviously, Zack Snyder's Ben Affleck Batman kills regularly and uses guns. My point is, Batman killing has been done a lot in live action. Batman not killing in a live action film would be refreshing, and kind of new for general audiences. I wish he didn't kill in all these live action films, but that's the reality of it. Mr. Sunday Movies has a video that's really in depth that compiles all the times that Batman kills in a live action movie. It's called like Batman Kill Cam or something. So I'll link that in the description and I'll maybe put a card on screen. So before I get into my third point, I just want to say please consider subscribing. It helps the channel grow and it lets me know that you guys enjoy the type of content that I'm currently making. Also, please make sure you hit the bell to get notifications every time I post a video. I'll be doing other videos about Batman, so look out for that. And getting into the third reason, based on what Matt Reeves said about this version of Batman, how he wants it to be different from other versions of Batman, I think not killing really fits in with what he has said about it. One thing Matt Reeves, who's the writer and director, said is that he wants this film to be a smaller, more detective-based story. I think one of the biggest reasons why Batman kills people in all those previous movies I mentioned is because they tend to be big action movies where the norm is to constantly have things explode or get shot at. The smaller, more detective-based story format lends itself better to a more compassionate Batman who doesn't blow things up or shoot things all the time. He's also said he wants it to be a new, year one style Batman that hasn't totally figured himself out yet. A movie with that kind of Batman, one that doesn't quite know what he stands for yet, is the perfect opportunity for him to learn through his experiences over the course of the film that he shouldn't kill. Maybe he could come close to killing someone and then remember the pain he went through with his own parents and ultimately decides not to inflict that pain onto someone else. Break your code, but for something I actually did. Gotham needs Batman. So that's my case for Robert Pattinson's. So that's my case for Robert Pattinson's 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 So that's my case for Robert Pattinson's so that's my case for Robert Pattinson's Batman not killing anyone in the upcoming 2021 film. I'm not saying I think that's all that I think that it needs to do in order for it to be good. I'm also not saying that it's objectively bad if he does kill. But I do think that if he does kill, it would ruin the movie for me personally. And I really want to like this movie, so I really hope he doesn't kill people. And like I said, if you disagree with me, that's totally okay. There's a lot of great arguments on the other side, too, that I've seen. There's no one objectively good interpretation of any character or story. This is just the one that I would personally enjoy the most. And if you're wondering about where my Stargirl Episode 6 review is, because I reviewed Episode 5, I actually decided against doing weekly reviews just in general because what I found was that the idea of having to release a video on this specific day, whatever the day is, Stargirl is Mondays, it put me under pressure. And I, I don't have a problem with making videos every week, but having to make videos on that specific day, uh, it was putting me under stress. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to review the first half of the season of whatever show I'm going to be reviewing and then doing another video for the second half 
of the season. So with Stargirl, I'll treat my episode five review as the first kind of half because I did talk about my feelings on the show so far. And then once the finale comes out, I'll do a video for episode six through 13. So that's how it will work for other shows I'm going to review like Doom Patrol. Doom Patrol, I'll do the first four or five episodes and then the last four or five episodes. I am just starting out on YouTube. So I want to thank everyone for bearing with me as I figure out what types of videos to make, how to format them, when to release videos. I'm still figuring all that out. So with all that being said, I want to hear what do you guys think of the upcoming Robert Pattinson movie? Are you excited for it? Are you not so excited for it? Are you planning to see it? And do you agree or disagree with my stance on Batman killing? Whatever your opinion is, please let me know in the comments. I hope to see you next time. Stay shway. Let me ask you this. What's that? What about hope? Oh, fuck. Come on, Frank. About Santa Claus, you want to talk about Santa Claus? I live in the real world, yeah. too, and I've seen it. What have you seen? Redemption, Frank. Yeah. It's real. Jesus and it's possible. The people you murder deserve another chance. What, to kill again, rape again? Is that what no, you Frank, want? No, Frank, to try again, Frank. To try.